you guys welcome back to a i don't know if this is an at home i think it's just me wrapping the taste a little bit you know as the year winds down i want to kind of dig deep into how you see yourself yesterday i did a quick little literally probably one minute maybe uh, post on Instagram about how you see yourself and um, overcoming a defeatist attitude. You will always feel defeated if you don't see yourself as great. And I know this seems like really basic or like, oh, you, everybody should know this, but a lot of people don't. And um, so I really kind of want to touch into that and really dig into it because how you see yourself matters with where you're going and your overall success rate to achieve your goals and to make things happen in life. You will not see success with a defeatist attitude. If you see yourself as small, you will stay small. Not only will you see yourself small, you will project that onto other people because you will assume that because you see yourself small, that other people will see yourself small. And so if other people see me as small, they can automatically discredit me. And then you start continuing a down this road of defeatist attitude. So then you start saying, they'll never pick me. I'm the least of everybody. I'm too small. I'm too this. And all you'll ever see are your faults, your flaws, all the things that you think discredit you. But the things you think discredit you are probably the things the world needs to overcome certain challenges. So what? You're only four feet tall. You think you're the only four foot tall person in the world? Not at all. But even in your short four foot tall stature, you got something to offer the world. So don't see your height as 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 a challenge or as a as a barrier. See it as I'm four feet tall. Guess what? Okay, I might not be able to ride this ride or I might not be able to do this, but you know what? I can do this, 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 and this, and I can do it better than anybody else. Don't see See everything as an obstacle. Learn to be optimistic. If you go through life with a pessimistic attitude, that's what you're going to receive because that's what you're putting out. You create this defeatist world in your mind. And so you go through life defeated. And that's, that's so not the point of life. Like the point of life is not for you to walk through it feeling defeated. The point of the going through life is to be successful, to achieve your goals, whatever they may be. So what you, you know, you don't have the greatest GPA. Listen, I just read on Twitter, this girl got admitted to Tuskegee University, my alma mater, by the way. And I got to read this to y'all because it's so profound that I just was like, girl, you better go ahead. She got accepted to Tuskegee a year ago. I got to see this, honey. Y'all got y'all 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 don't understand this is real powerful. Like this is real stuff. This is happening in people's lives and I got to go to it because it's serious. One day ago this girl posted Tuskegee accepted me with a 1.9 GPA. That don't even happen, honey. This ain't nobody but God. And a 1450 SAT score. Happy face crying. Yeah, my SAT score was good, but no other school would accept me. Now I'm a junior double major with a 3.3 GPA, which is a huge accomplishment for me. I thank Skeegee every day for giving me a chance. Listen to me. Another girl says she got accepted to Tuskegee University at the Black College Expo her senior year. Listen, you can't. This girl didn't let a 1.9 a 1 GPA, but she had a 1450 SAT score. But her 1.9 disqualified her. Every, what did she went through with a defeatist attitude? Like, I got a 1.9 GPA. Ain't nobody going to let me in what I'm going to do with life. No. But she got into Tuskegee University, and it is considered an elite HBCU. Because they don't play. I, she got in. She's a junior with a 3.3. She didn't have a defeatist attitude and you can't either. Elijah Cummings, this man passed away at today at like 2.45 in the morning. And when I saw the news, my heart dropped. But listen, 
Listen, um, this guy, you want to talk about overcomer. He had school teachers telling him, I got to get to it because I'm telling you, this was something. He had school teachers telling him he wasn't going to make it into law school or anything because he read and learned. He um, basically just was slow learning, was a slow learner. He read slow. Everything was just, he just, the, the deck was stacked against him. He was the son of a sharecropper, all this other kind of stuff. But look at what he accomplished in that time. He didn't have a defeatist attitude and allow any of that to, you know, keep him from rising to the cream of the crop. And here he is just changing things across, around Baltimore. Um, when he got sworn in all those years ago, his father cried. Because it was such a huge, and I mean, just such a huge accomplishment that it was just insane. It was just insanely amazing. And so I, I just, I got to get to it. It says, from South Carolina parents who fled north to becoming Howard U. student government uh, president. This is a quintessential African-American story of ascension in spite of institutional barriers. Elijah Cummings was the son of sharecroppers. <laughs> and he was he was one of the most powerful Democrats in Washington. You didn't have to like him. I saw somebody who wrote and said they didn't even like him. They didn't really care for him as far as policies, but they respected him. They respected where the man came. They respected his story because at the end of the day, an overcomer story is an overcomer story. So this man was born a sharecropper's son. He was told he was too slow to learn and spoke poorly. He would never fulfill his dream of becoming a lawyer. Yet, he was one of the most powerful committee chairmen in the United States House. You can't have a defeatist attitude and think you're going to accomplish greatness. A lot of people achieve greatness. Why? Because they don't let negativity, this thing, that thing, tell them what they're going to be. No, they overcome those things. They speak those things that be not as though they were. They tell themselves, I don't care what the odds are. I don't care what's in front of me. I'm going to be successful. And I'm telling you, Get over that defeatist attitude. Tell yourself something positive. I have, I used to have affirmations on my walls and I got to put them back up again, but I got a picture of it. And it's just, you got to surround yourself with positivity. So anytime any possible negative pessimistic thought comes in my head, lies, I shut it down. Why? Because I refuse to have a defeatist attitude. Things aren't going my way right now. Oh, they're not looking up. This deal fell through. Guess what? That will not stop me from getting to yes. And I'm telling you, don't let anything stop you from getting to yes. Don't let anything stop you from getting to where you want to go. Shut out the defeatist attitude. Turn your thinking around and see yourself differently. When you do that, I'm telling you, you your life is going to change. And I'm not saying it's going to happen overnight. It's a process. You've been talking negative about yourself your whole life. But keep doing it. And I'm telling you, you will see a difference. The last quarter of the year is powerful because you need to build momentum for the... Listen, you finish this year off with a bang so you can start the year off with a bang. Keep that momentum going because you want to keep going up and riding that right riding that roller coaster ride. Yeah, it's gonna ebb and flow. But in those downtime, guess what you're doing? You're still building up speed to go on to that next hill to overcome that next thing. You can do this. You just gotta believe you can, and you have to say to yourself, I can, I am, and I will. Love you guys. Remember to spread lots of love and light. Mm -hmm.